In this video, we look at bitwise manipulation and masks, and shifts combined with AND, OR, and XOR. So with a binary shift, all we're going to do is shift all the bits over to the left or to the right. So let's consider the binary number 22 shown here. We're going to left shift it by one bit. And then what happens is the bit in the 128 column is going to disappear off the left hand side. The bit that's in the 64 column is going to move over, left shifted one position so that it becomes a zero. The bit in the 32 position is going to shift one place to the left. The bit in the 16 position shifts to the left. The bit in the 8 position shifts one space to the left. The same with the 4 position, the 2 position, and the 1 position. We end up with an empty slot on the far right, which we can simply pad with a zero. So if we left shift the number 22 one place, what we get back is 32 plus 8, which is 40, plus 4, which is 44. So 22 has become 44. In effect, we've multiplied the number by 2. Now, you don't just have to shift by one bit. You could shift by two bits or more. The principle is the same. The bits are going to disappear off the left-hand side. They're going to get padded on the right-hand side. And any in the middle are going to be shifted over that number of places. A binary right shift is exactly the same, just in the other direction. So we start by shifting each digit right the number of places we need. So we're going to do a right shift of one. So the naught from the 128 column ends up in the 64 column. The naught in the 64 column ends up right shifted one place in the 32 and so on, and so forth. The final naught in the one column disappears off the right-hand side, and we pad the leading space under the 128 column with a zero. In effect, we have half the number we have divided it by two when we shift to the right by one bit. Just like the shift to the left, we don't have to shift to the right by just one bit at a time. As we can see, binary left and right shift can be used to multiply and divide binary numbers. Note that in both examples, the logical shift pads the empty space with a zero. Therefore, logical shifts only work with unsigned binary. As we already know, in 2's complement signed binary, the most significant bit is reserved as the sign bit, where 0 represents a positive number and 1 represents a negative number. In this situation, a logical right shift is no use, as the 1 from the most significant bit column which represents minus 128, gets shifted one place to the right, and the space left behind gets padded or filled by a zero, thus suddenly turning the number positive. However, if we use an arithmetic right shift instead of a logical one, the vacant MSB is filled with the value that was previously held in the MSB. So in this case, the one is retained. So we can't divide negative numbers with a logical shift, but we can divide negative numbers with an arithmetic right shift. Now the OCR exam clarification document states candidates should be able to perform right and left logical shifts. So arithmetic shifts should not come up in your exam, but we thought it was definitely worth mentioning. So we can also manipulate bit patterns by applying masks. Masking allows us to isolate and extract bit values in a sequence of bits, or toggle and set bit values in a sequence of bits. 
Bitwise masks make use of logical operators such as AND, OR and XOR. You'll require a basic understanding of these logical operators which we cover in our GCSE and A-level video series. Let's look at how we can use a bitwise AND operation to extract a subset of bits from a binary sequence. So our binary sequence is 10011101. The mask we're going to apply is 11110000. We apply the bitwise AND operation on both the original binary sequence and the mask to get the output. So we've got a binary digit of 1 and a mask of 1. Well, 1 and 1 is 1. 0 and 1 is 0. 0 and 1 is 0. 1 and 1 is 1. 1 and 0 is 0. 1 and 0 is 0. 0 and 0 is 0. And 1 and 0 is 0. The AND mask has allowed us to extract a subset of bits, in this case the first nibble, the first four. In all instances where we set the value of the mask to zero, we're effectively blanking out or ignoring the original binary sequence. In all instances where we set the value of the mask to one, we're effectively copying the original binary sequence. Let's look at how we can use a bitwise OR operation this time to set a subset of bits. So again, we've got a binary sequence across the top line, and then we've got our mask, four ones and four zeros. Now this time we're going to apply the bitwise OR operation to both the original binary sequence and the mask to get the output. So we've got one OR one. So in this situation, we're oring not anding, so only one of the two has to be a one for the output to be one. So one or one is one. Zero or one is one. Only one of them has to be a one. Zero or one is one. One or one is one. One or zero is one. One or zero is one. Zero or zero is zero. And finally, one or zero is one. So what effect has this operation had? Well, the bits in the first nibble have all been set to one, even if they were originally zero. The bits in the second nibble have retained their original values. So by using a mask with a bitwise OR operation, we use ones where we want to set the values, and we use zeros where we want to leave them alone. So let's look at how we can use a bitwise XOR operation to toggle a subset of bits. So again, the same binary sequence and the same mask is applied. So this time we're gonna apply the bitwise XOR operation. Again, both on the original binary sequence and the mask to produce our output. So XOR, if you don't remember, stands for exclusive OR. Before, if we said one or one, then the output was one, but it's an exclusive OR. So if both are turned on, effectively if both of them are one, then the output is gonna be zero. It's only if one or the other is one, not if both. So one XOR one is zero. Zero OR one, or sorry, zero XOR one, you have to be careful there, that's one. 0 x or 1 is 1. 1 x or 1, that's no good. We've got both 1s there, so that's 0. 1 x or 0 is 1. 1 x or 0 is 1. 0 x or 0 is 0. And 1 x or 0 is 1. Has a bit of mouthful to get through. So what effect has this had on the output? You can see the bits have been toggled where the mask has been applied, in other words, set to one. They've been switched around. The ones become zeros and the zeros become ones. 
where the mask has not been applied, in other words set to zero, the bits have remained the same as the original sequence. Therefore, the combination of a mask and a bitwise XOR operation allows us to toggle a subset of bits in a binary sequence. So, where are masks and bitwise operations used in computing? Because this may all seem very abstract. It, it actually has many different uses, but a great example of masks and bitwise operations relates to routing traffic on a network. Computing devices have an IP address, a unique number used to address or identify a host computer or node that communicates with other devices over the internet via IP. There are currently two versions of IP in use today, IP version 4 and 6. And here on the screen, we see an IP version 4 address, and you're probably already familiar with these. Although we see them as a set of four decimal separated numbers, this is simply for our convenience. Computers actually store each IP address as a sequence of 32-bit binary numbers. The IP address is further broken down into two separate parts, part that identifies the network the device is on and part that identifies the host. We can use a mask and a bitwise AND operation to isolate the network or the host part of the address as required. Here, we've isolated the network part of the IP address. During the routing of traffic around a network, this technique can be used to work out whether the destination computer is on the same network as the host by examining the network ID. Having watched this video, you should be able to answer the following key question. What other operations can an arithmetic logic unit carry out?